Hi everybody and welcome again to part two as we look at Acts chapter 16. And where did we leave off? We left Paul and Silas in prison after being beaten and arrested. But what were they doing? They were praising God. We've been singing that song lately. I'm going to praise in the middle of the storm. Not easy to do, but you know, praise works. That's why Jehoshaphat, when they were surrounded by the enemy on every side, what did he do after seeking the Lord? He sent out the worshippers in the choir at the head of the army, and it worked. Praise worked. And as they went forth singing and praising God, the enemy was so confused that they started killing each other. What did Joshua and the people do when they went round Jericho? They gave a great big shout of praise and the walls came tumbling down. David was often in situations that were dire, but he said, why are you downcast down my soul? Yet I will still praise him. So they were praising and praying. And then we get this wonderful word, suddenly. I absolutely love this biblical word, suddenly. And for many of us, we've been praying for suddenlies to happen. And sometimes time goes on and we never see that answer or we're just waiting. And I just want to encourage you as you listen to this, never ever give up on the suddenlies. Whether it's for yourself, whether it's for family, whether it's for sickness, whether it's for a financial problem, whether it's a job situation, whatever it may be, suddenlies still happen. So suddenly it says there was this mighty earthquake. This incredible miracle happened. And you know, for a lot of people today, they need to see the miraculous. Paul actually said, didn't he, that when he was on his preaching travels, I didn't just come with persuasive words, but with a demonstration of power. That's why this book that we've been looking at now for a few weeks is called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's a demonstration of the power of God and how we long and need to see that power in action today in our nation, all around us, in our churches. So suddenly there was this mighty earthquake and I believe that we're going to see in these days great and mighty things that none of us have seen before. It's interesting that the Passion Translation has a heading and it says that miracles can come out of painful places. And maybe you're in that painful place at the moment, but that suddenly is coming. That miracle's about to happen. And so, as this earthquake hit, it says the prison doors flew open. The chains fell off the prisoners. And maybe through what we've been going through over these past couple of years, we've felt chained up. Maybe they're beginning to be loosened, but for a lot of people, those chains are still very real. And you may even find yourself in a situation as you're listening, I'm fearful. I still feel afraid. I still feel that there are chains, maybe there are addictions and things that are holding you back. But that suddenly can come. And Jesus is the one who can set us free, whom the Son sets free. The Bible says, is free indeed. That's why the great hymn writer Charles Wesley, and we love that hymn, my chains fell off, my heart was free, I rose, went forth and followed thee, maybe condemnation, guilt, depression, whatever it is, those chains can be broken in Jesus' name. It's the anointing 
of the Holy Spirit that breaks the yokes. And so the poor jailer, this is all about the jailer. This whole encounter is about that man. And when he saw, when he heard, he got his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought it's easier to kill myself than be tortured by uh, the Roman authorities when they find out what's happened. And Paul shouts out, don't do it, don't do it. We're all here. And to his utter amazement, as the jailer looked round at all the cells, all the prisoners were still there. Nobody had run away. This was amazing. And the word says that the jailer took Paul and Silas outside. And then he said these incredible words. What must I do to be saved? He was thinking of being rescued, of, of help in his, his hour of need. And Paul answered him and said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. I absolutely love this verse because it involves my household. It involves your household. Earlier in the chapter, we read of Lydia, uh, the businesswoman who came to know Jesus, but it says that her and her household were all saved. Earlier, we had that wonderful chapter with Peter and Cornelius. That when Peter, under the leading of the Holy Spirit, when he went to Peter's house, it says that uh, when Peter went to Cornelius' house, it says that the whole household, when they heard the word of the Lord, were all saved. And I believe that God's into household salvations. And maybe you've been praying for years for your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, friends. Don't give up. Those suddenlies are coming. Those chains are coming off. I believe that every day. I declare that every day, that my household will be saved. That one day, me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And it's your influence, it's your presence in that house that has an effect on the one that you're praying and longing for. So the jailer, took Paul and Silas back to his house, says they tended their wounds. And Paul and Silas stayed there for a few days. And they heard the word of the Lord. And they received the whole household, Jesus as their saviour. And as uh, a proof of their heart changed, it said they were all baptised. Salvation came to that household that day. See, the whole thing was a divine setup. As I told you last time, Paul and Silas could have used their Roman citizenship card not to go to jail, but Paul knew that God was up to something. And it was through his obedience that the jailer and his family found the Lord Jesus Christ Oh, what grace. Oh, what mercy. Oh, what love. Let me just finish by summing this up in this brief message as an encouragement to you. What are the lessons that we've learned just from this passage? To be led constantly by the Holy Spirit. Don't always go by your own instincts as Paul and Silas did at the beginning when it said that the Spirit forbade them. Listen, listen to the Holy Spirit's leading in every area of your life. Praise works. I know it's difficult at times, but give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances, not for the circumstances, but in it. Praise still works. Keep expecting the suddenness. 
they are going to have. Jesus can break every chain, every yoke, everything that may holding you back. He can set you free. Fifthly, miracles still happen. And they're going to happen. We're still living in the day of the acts of the Holy Spirit. And believe, as with me, for household salvations. Have a great week. Be wonderfully blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen.